She thinks my tractor sexy. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for jumping in to this video today. My name is Danny Coldblood, aka My Music Vidiot, and we're here in the wonderful world of Grand Theft Auto V, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the Epsilon program. The Epsilon program has been a mystery since even before GTA V, and Rockstar Games knew that, and they decided to bring the Epsilon program back, and even better than ever, with even more mysteries and cryptic sayings and everything else tied to it. And one of those things that we have tied to the Epsilon program is the sun. As you can see, Michael is wearing the Epsilon robes, and he has the medallion of the sun on his chest, and even on the Epsilon program property, the gates to get in have the suns as well. And there's also another small little uh, red flag, if you will. When you go closer to the building, the music for the Epsilon Center actually gets louder. So this building is a source of sound in the game. Music plays from this location. You can hear the Epsilon program music playing when you get close to the building or when you're actually in the grounds over there. Now the reason that I bring up the Epsilon program is because there is a lot involved within the Epsilon program. I pointed out the sun, okay, the sun and the moon and the solar system, all of that stuff we know is heavily related to this mystery. We have shoot for the stars as a key hint on the blueprint map and that also leads to why I've been doing the Shoot for the Stars episodes every Saturday. And we get a little bit closer and deeper into understanding Rockstar's lore within those episodes. And also, uh, the music that flows from the Epsilon program's building. Now, all that stuff just seems like regular things that we've been accustomed to since we've been playing this game for a couple of years. But when you look at it as a whole, it's tied to a lot of key clues. We've talked about music. Music is very, very important when looking at this mystery. And we've even seen music tied to other clues. Oh my god, really, dude? Like, I can't fucking do a fucking video, you cocksuckers! Sorry about that. Every single time I try to record this video, something has gone wrong. So my apologies. So as I was saying, we have the Mad Dog poster right down there. And he's a musician from previous GTA games right here on the Vinewood Music uh, building. Okay, and there's a lot of clues tied in within. Now also, directly across the street here, we have Acting Up with a star as well. Now, Rockstar seems to use a lot of stars when they are giving us clues, and I can see why. Their name is Rock Star. But not only is acting up the director mode that uh, we were given as an update within the game, but AU, as it says on the building, AU with a star, AU is also tied to astrology slash astronomy okay an astro astrological unit I'm sorry so you you can go ahead and google that it's very interesting and it ties a lot into some of the stuff that we've talked about before now I do want to get back into the main topic here which I want to focus on which is the epsilonists and the epsilon program so as we go down a little bit here down the block we can see mattress of fact now, what's one thing that the Epsilon program seems to say a lot, okay? They like to say everything is a fact, okay? Dinosaurs aren't real. Fact. This is a fact. That is a fact. Mattress of fact, okay? So, right next door to this, we have a comic book store. And right on the top of the building, it says Epsilon Society. 
And if we look a little bit closer, we have this door here. And this door has the Epsilon logo inside of what appears to be a keyhole. And in that keyhole, we can see the sun in the background. But not only is that a sun, if you look closely, it actually appears to be an eye. Take a look at that. It's almost like they used the sun and did it in an artistic manner to also show an eye. So we see the duality right there. Now, Epsilon is definitely tied to duality a whole hell of a lot, and that's what I'm going to get to, guys. That's what the point of this video is going to be, what it's all going to boil down to, okay? So bear with me here. Check this out. One thing that we can go ahead and listen to, I talked about music. I made a point to talk about sound. If you go to the radio, you can listen to one of the shows, and one of the shows is called um, Chakra Attack with Dr. D'Angelo Harris, and he talks all about duality, and when you try to decipher some of the stuff that he says, it actually ties into a lot of clues and a lot of things that are actually helping me out with solving a lot of what I'm looking at here in the mystery. And I think that with more help, with you guys involved, we can actually uncover more truths. And that is also what we're going to have to do. By the end of this video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. When we look at the door, we can also see something fishy here. We have the Epsilon program building and the clues for the Epsilon their symbol and everything, but we also see things that are tied to children of the mountain, like self-actualization and shit like that. Now, I've brought this stuff up before, and I actually made a video showing how the Epsilonists and the children of the mountain are actually one in the same. They are in cahoots, they are friends, and I have the proof in a video to show you guys. If you haven't checked out that video, definitely look it up. And check it out it's on my channel but here is more proof of them merging together we have the Epsilonists we have more eyes we have quotes from children of the mountain which make me think that all these cults might tie in together as one ultimate clue we are sectioning these things apart children of the mountain the altruists the Epsilonists when maybe they should all be branded together as one entity and deciphered from there on. We also have the birthmark or the sign of craft here on this children's eye or this person's eye, which we know is a telltale sign of the Epsilonists. And for those of you that missed the episode where I talked about it, we have the logo of the Epsilonists that tie in all three characters' names, which would make sense to what I just said about the cults all needed to be tied in together as one. If you look at it, we have a T, right? Here's the T going down, up to the T. So that would be Trevor. If we cut off this part of the T and look at it from here, we have an F, right? There's your F for Franklin. And then there's your sideways M for Michael. Do you guys see how each one of the characters' first letters to their names all create the Epsilon logo? You see that? There's a T, there's an F, and there's also a sideways M. So maybe the Children of the Mountain, the Epsilonists, and the Altruists all need to be looked at as one and deciphered from there on. Now, these are just some of the clues that I wanted to bring up. But when we get down to the dirty of it, I think there's one main thing that we need to focus on as a community, as hunters, all looking and working towards the same goal. There's one thing that we really need to work on, and that is deciphering one main piece of the Epsilon program. And I'll get to that in one second here. Looking at the door, we also have a Yeti and an alien head. Let's go ahead and look on the in-game phone for a quick second. If you go on your in-game phone to the internet, you can find a website called 
Cult Stoppers. If you check out Cult Stoppers, it actually has all of these cults or religions or whatever all tied in on this website. Now, when you look at the Epsilon program, it talks a lot about things that we've seen and heard before, but it also talks about something a little bit more supernatural, if you will. Right here, it talks about promise of a higher power and also mind control techniques. A lot of us uh, have the theory and think that there might be um, dreams that are tied in with the conclusion and the understanding of this mystery that Michael might be living in a dream. Well, what if he was being mind controlled, okay? But when you look at the core of what the Epsilon program is, it says, not that we go outside very often or open the blinds or talk to anyone but each other. Epsilon pays movie stars to tout a package deal of enlightenment, immortality, and sexual promiscuity. All, far, all framed by an extremely confusing and implausible backstory involving an alien called Kraft that the Epsilonists conveniently refuse to ever explain or talk about. Still, if Jimmy Boston and Clay Jackson believe it, then it must be true. Now, we do know about Kraft and the alien situation that the Epsilon program speak of, but let's go ahead and look at one of the other cults that I mentioned really quick. When looking at the altruists, check this out. It says right here that an old armed nudist is never a good thing, especially when they're rumored to be on some kind of ageist jihad against the under 40s at the bequest of an alien called Lord Zaffo, who is coming to reclaim the earth. Now, this is pretty crazy, because Kraft and Zaffo, they're all tied together. And as you look closer into what these cults believe in, we see that they're all tied together as well. And this even ties to Franklin with Children of the Mountain in more ways than one, even in that mission at the very beginning of the game, where you and Lamar go to steal that motorcycle, there's a bum that's right there before you hit the garage that says, get away from me, Zaffo agents. So there is a lot to learn on this website. I recommend you guys definitely take a look at it. It's called Cult Stoppers, and all you have to do is search the word cult on your in-game phone, and you'll find a hell of a lot of information on this website. I don't want to focus too much on this stuff right now, although I could, and I could spend a long time, because I can make point after point after point, and I could back up this theory more and more and more if I wanted to, but I think most of you already understand a lot of this, and are already on board with what I've been presenting to you guys. We have a pretty good community here, pretty good fan base on the channel, and I think a lot of us are like-minded and here to fight the same fight. So I don't think I have to really knock you guys' heads off with all this shit right now. But maybe in the future video, we'll get more down and dirty with the details. Now, to get to the point of what I wanted to bring to your guys' attentions to begin with, what I think we all need to focus on and all need to work on we all need to help each other decipher one main thing that was given to us by the Epsilon program themselves. Shoot for the stars, guys. Shoot for the stars. That is one major clue that we have within the GTA 5 game, okay? Given to us by a blueprint map that came with a special edition copy of the game. And when using a blacklight, that clue will be revealed. Also, in the game, we have different blueprints that are mysteriously placed around the map in very rare and suspicious locations. This is one of those locations, and I've always wondered if there was a significance to finding these things, if there's a reason for them, if they are there to let us know that we're in a high relevant spot for looking at clues, or if this is a focal point for the mystery. Well, if there's any place that makes sense to have that map, that would be right here at this location. We are at someone's house right now, and the person's house that we are at, his name is Dima Popov. D-I-M-A-P-O-P-O-V. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you guys the Wikipedia image for this character.
Now, let me explain to you why we're even here, okay? When looking at the text messages given to you by Marnie, when collecting the different Epsilon tracks, okay, one of those text messages will tell you what dwelling is worthy of craft. He is humble, yet we exalt him. Each one of her messages contains a little clue or riddle or puzzle and then we have to go and find the tracked base on the text message we are given. Well, this is what text message we were given and this is the location we have to go to. Only under careful research and examination of the facts, <laughs> the facts, you get it? Was I able to find out that this person was Dima Popov and this whose house we're at right now, where that blueprint map was also found right near the Epsilon Shrekt that we were searching for. It's funny because Dima Popov is actually only in the online uh, version of this game. He's not actually in single player, so it would be very hard for us to find out information about this person. We would actually have to play online to have the whole clue revealed to us. His full name is Dmitry Popov, and he's tied in with the heists. So it's very, very suspicious that we have to use online in conjunction with single player to understand a lot of what the game is throwing at us, clue-wise, especially when looking at this mystery. I'll get more into this detail and this kind of, this kind of information in the near future. But I want to get to the point of what I'm talking about as I've been saying throughout the video. A couple of these places that Marnie sends us to go to are very, very suspicious. One of those locations is in Mount Chiliad, right there at the TO1 and TO2 tunnel. And the clue that sends us there says, In the core of the mountain where the blast is not felt. There you shall find it. What blast? Is there a blast door that is needing to be opened? Maybe right there next to the mural? There's a lot of stuff to think about and a lot of clues given to us by Marnie that maybe some of us have overlooked. Another message that Marnie sends us says, We are not dinosaurs, not, nor plants, but a tree in the jet stream may hold Kraft's true word. And this Epsilon Tract is actually located, again, at Mount Chiliad, right on top of Mount Chiliad, right near that little deck that says, come back when your story is complete. We are not dinosaurs, nor plants, but a tree in the jet pack stream? The jet pack stream? That's kind of weird that it says jet stream. It's so close to jet pack. It's half the word, jet pack. So I think that that's a huge clue in itself. And as I analyze a lot of the messages and clues given to us by Marnie in search for the tracks, I'm finding a lot about how Epsilon uses their cryptic type of words to kind of lead us astray when actually they could be giving us the answer directly as a duality. And I know that this could be taken uh, differently by different people, but guys, I'm telling you, the game stresses it an awful lot. Like I said, that radio show Chakra Attack by Dr. D'Angelo Harris, he talks all about this kind of shit and it makes perfect sense when you really get down and dirty and look into it. So, what I'm asking you guys today to do is maybe we can focus a little bit on something that we were given after we completed all of these tracks. When our Epsilon story is completed, I talked about this in a recent video, guys, about how maybe all we have to do is the Epsilon program, start the game, and go ahead and just do the Epsilon program, focus on nothing else. I have a whole video on this topic, and we talked a lot about some good shit. So if you haven't seen that video, I recommend it. I really highly recommend that video. But talking about all this stuff, we are left with one thing after we complete all of the tracks. When our Epsilon story is complete, we are given an email by Marnie, okay, and she sends us 
to a website, theepsilonprogram.com, and we are able to read the tract. This web, this uh, email says, Craft be praised. The tract is complete. A truth so simple yet complex that we fear you may not have acquired the technology to understand it. Equip yourself with the powerful tools and knowledge you need at theepsilonprogram.com. Now, you see what I'm saying, guys? She's telling us that we don't have the tools we need. This is where we get the tools that we need. This is how we're going to really uncover a lot of what we need, guys, to solve this mystery. I guarantee goddamn tea it. So, basically, we have the pages of the Epsilon Tract right here at our disposal when clicking on this link in our email after doing the tract. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video out showing you guys the papers, the tract itself, the completed tract. And if you guys want to spend some time trying to decipher and decode some of the words here, because they are put in very cryptic ways, a lot of dualities, but I think the answer is right before our eyes. Some look left and some look right, guys, but sometimes the answer is right in front of our fucking face. So with your help, as a community, as hunters looking to do and solve the same thing, I think we can do this together. So let's go ahead and try to see what we can come up with. Let's try to decipher, decode, and crack this Chilead mystery by starting with the one way we know how to gather the tools and knowledge we need. So thank you very much, guys. I hope this was a helpful and inspirational video for you all. Some food for thought, at least. And I'll see you guys in the next video or broadcast. Take it easy. Ta-ta and as mother fucking always. Peace!